Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of What's Happening. I'm George Bins, and I'm here with my co-host, Gail Burke. And we have as our guest this evening, Taylor Armiting. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you. And uh, Taylor is a columnist that writes regularly for the Salem Evening News. In fact, this is a Thursday when we're recording, and this is your day on it. And I was interested in your column today, talking about the trendy socialism, which only makes us all miserable. Um, how do you pick a topic for one of these uh, op-ed pieces? Well, generally, I try to keep track of what people are talking about. Um, if if uh, something is, as they say, trending, you're going to see a fair amount of it on the news. You're going to see a fair amount amount of it on the political websites that I go to. I go to websites that sort of have a range of opinions. For instance, which one do you like? I like National Review on the on the conservative side. I like Washington Monthly on the liberal side. And then there's you know Politico, Politifact, Fact, um, uh, Washington Post. Uh, what, you know, the Washington Examiner, the uh, Washington Free Beacon. I mean, there's, there's a whole range of them yeah. and with a very wide range of opinions. Well, that's one of the problems that I struggle with is how do you get some straight answers or some real information? And what do you have to do, watch them all and sort of average them? Or? I think so. I think that's part of it. Um, the, the ones that are credible uh, are generally, uh, they take a point of view. But if they report that something happened or didn't happen or they talk about a court decision and quote the court decision, you can pretty much rely on what they've written as being accurate. They're, mm -hmm. they're pretty faithful to uh, the record, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There are so many others that aren't. That's, well, that's right. There are. Um, <laughs> I, the, was the, watching, uh, I was watching a little bit of uh, Morning Joe today. Okay. He and his girlfriend, wife, I don't know what she is. <clears throat> hate Trump with a passion. And Boy, that's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> I, I have a bone to pick with you as well. <clears throat> but uh, they were talking about, a ch they had heard, it's always kind of a clue, I have heard that a child, one of the migrant children <clears throat> being held, had died. No proof, no backup, nothing. But we had heard that a child died, and we're going to investigate further. We can't... Uh, we can't say for sure, but that's what's being reported. And I thought, being reported by who? Haven't heard anybody but you say that. Right. What a terrible thing to do. Right. Well, gen generally, if you want to be credible, you need to cite a source of some Absolutely. kind. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And, but of course, <laughs> tr Trump, Trump gets bashed sometimes, I think, justifiably for, and, of course, the way it's reported is that he said, without evidence, that such and such. Oh, yeah. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. But on your column a couple of weeks ago, you were not very kind to President Trump. I think he deserves some of the criticism that I've... Uh... Well, <laughs> some of it. <laughs> However, you t uh, it was about Russia yeah. and the pres president's press conference. Right. Can he even hear himself talk? Well... Why didn't he correct himself immediately yes, in front of yes, Putin? Yes, right. And I thought, why should he in front of Putin? Come on. Well, if he meant to say should or meant to say shouldn't, I think he should have said what he meant to say. And if he heard him say something different, if, you know, if, if, if I say yes and I meant to say no, I'm going to hear that okay. and I'm going to correct it. Okay. So but I, maybe you don't realize it until later. Anyway. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I know that um, Nelson Benton, former editor. Good guy. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say anything about his opinions. I just said he's a good guy. Good guy yeah. Well, I, I think it's almost every Friday he writes a column. Yeah. Every time he writes a column, almost without exception, it's bashing Trump, calling names. I mean, I think, first of all, Nelson lives in Arizona, Arizona now, and he's reporting here on local news for the most part. However, it's... Our showman in chief, he calls him. Uh, he always, always calls him a name, and he somehow manages to worm something bad about Trump into a lot of his uh, his dealings. Mm -hmm. And w almost without fail, it's Seth Moulton, <laughs> former Marine, yeah. who served in Iraq. I mean. <laughs> 
Is there no objectivity here? Oh, not, not not in a column like that. My my <laughs> columns are not objective either. Well, you know, no, they, they are. Well, they're, they're an opinion. They're, they're and, more, yeah. Yeah, but you're more fair. But I mean, well. every single week, it, it's like okay. I always think, what horrible things is Nelson Benton going to say about President Trump this week? Uh, you know, it just gets to be old hat, and you know, right. it's like Nelson, why don't you take a break? Go report on what's happening in Arizona kind of thing. Well, some of my <laughs> beloved critics uh, say the same thing about me. Yeah. So, why don't you take a break and then just give it up altogether? Yeah. <laughs> well, that gets to the, the heart of the problem of we're going to have an election in 100 days as we yeah. keep getting reminded. Right. And already they're complaining that the Russians are hacking into the system mm -hmm. and they're going to do something. Um, and that the Russians are going to influence the election. Well, aren't these columnists and so-called reporters trying to influence the, the election? Oh, of, What's of, different about well, it? The difference is that this is a foreign power. I mean, I, I have plenty to say about that. I could probably chew up the rest of the 20 minutes we have left. But, you know, certainly if you're a citizen of a country mm -hmm. and you're trying to sway people's opinions, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. If you are a foreign, a hostile foreign power, yeah. And you are trying to surreptitiously um, sway opinion or, you know, as has been alleged, hack into the private communications of a political party and things like that. I, I think those are very qualitatively different things. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I, I think it's well known that America has a long history of trying to influence other countries, governments and elections and whatever, for what I think are really good reasons. Yeah. You know, I believe in democracy. Yeah. And I think if we could if we could influence other, other countries to stop being tyrannies and, and run by despots, that would be a really good thing for human mm -hmm. rights. But from their perspective, we're interfering in their elections. Yeah. You know, well, so. isn't there a difference between uh, interfering and hacking? Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, yes and no. I mean, it, it's, yeah. you know, wh whatever means necessary. I, I'm sure, I, I don't, and I don't have evidence for this, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that the U.S. government has used surreptitious means to try to influence the populations or maybe even officials in other countries for what may, in my opinion, be really good reasons. Well, it was Radio but, Free Europe. Sure, well, was I mean, that, but that was kind of out in the open. That wasn't well, surreptitious. Yeah, but right. uh, there were probably other stations that were mm -hmm. not quite as... Right. Uh, oh, as open as you say. Right. right. They were doing similar kinds of things. Right. Uh, Russia is extremely upset with us for influencing the election in the Ukraine. Sure. And it's somewhat of a tit for tat. Sure. So, sure. But like I think I said, they're trying to draw the inference that it's Russia doing it and therefore Trump is involved in it. I think that's well, what, yes. the, what that's they're trying to do from the get-go. And that's, that's the, pro, the part that bothers from, me. From the beginning, that has been the means, mm -hmm. in my view, this is in my view, that's been the means to try to delegitimize Trump right. as a president. Yeah. Yeah. Is to say, you know, we don't have any proof that any votes were changed, but they interfered with this and they did that. And the, the very clear implication is that Hillary Clinton would be the president were it not for the interference of the Russians. Right. So yeah. that's... That's why we've been talking about this for two years. Yeah. And, and I mean, and, well, that's and it the other thing, too. It's been talked no about, proof. and nothing's ever happened. No. And they, they indict, keep on going. They invited, indicted 13 Russians about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Nothing ever came of that. But, now yeah, they invited, right. indicted. Another dozen. Another dozen, yeah. two days before the president meets with uh, Putin. Putin, right. And right. try to tell me that's a coincidence? No, of course no. not. So... <laughs> It's quite obvious that there is an ongoing battle to essentially take over the government yeah. or delegitimize or weaken the president. And, and the problem, the thing that bothers me is he was elected by the people. Right. And it's been almost two years. Right. And as I say to people, get over it. He won. Get away from it. Move on. Well, and, and they I can't agree. seem to do that. Well, I mean, I, I, I have said, and I really believe this, uh, you know, and obviously it didn't happen, so I can't prove that it would have happened. But if Hillary had been elected and the Russians had done the exact same things in behalf, quote, in behalf of her, uh, most of the serious people that I've heard talking about this 
say that Russia's intent is to divide and destabilize, that they weren't trying to get Trump elected. They just right. wanted to get Americans yeah. divided and hating each other. Yeah. They, which they succeeded in doing pretty well. They did well. Yes, very well. Yes, but if Hillary had been elected and the same <clears> things <throat> had happened and you could sort of perceive them as benefiting her, there would be no special counsel, there would be no That's election, right. and all the Trump people would be told that they were seditious and that they weren't accepting the will of the people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You exactly. know, it, it just wouldn't have happened. Well, so. this <laughs> division that you mentioned between the populations um, has been getting worse over the years, right. uh, Bush the second was not well thought of, no. not well oh, described. you mean Bush Hitler? Is that who you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now it's Trump Hitler. Yeah. They just moved. And <laughs> Obama was not treated very well by the other side either. That's right. Uh, Mitch McConnell was famous for saying that first, mo most important thing is make sure he doesn't get elected again. Well, yeah. what... Yeah. What so, party wouldn't want to just, make the opposition president well, a one-term president? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how how basic is that? Do you, do you think you think that the Democrats want Trump to be a two-term president? No. I would say their number one goal is to make Trump a one-term president. Yeah. Now, if that was awful to say about Obama, yeah. that means it's awful to say it about Trump. But I, the point I'm trying to get to is that this animosity between the parties yeah. is all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. And what have they accomplished? And They've I think there the was country. a um, YouTube video that went through some of the stuff about the uh, immigrants, quoting Clinton's 93. Yes, yes, I've seen those. That yes. one. Right. And then Obama in 2014. Right. And he ends up with say, sort of defending, hey, if you guys don't like the executive orders that I'm writing, pass a law. Right. And I got to give him credit. That's the thing. Congress is not doing their job. No. Agreed. No. Agreed. And then we have Seth Moulton, our local congressman, mm -hmm. um, running all over the countryside that trying to get awful. other veterans elected. Mm -hmm. and Only what, veterans that agree with him. Though. And well, and what has he accomplished, or what has any of them Nothing. accomplished in two years, four years? Pick any time frame you want. Well, so, but yeah, but the difference this time is that. You also have the press so against the president right. that every time he opens his mouth, they're dumping on him. And they don't care whether it's real news or fake news. Now, as a journalist, do you, are you concerned at all by a lot of this fake news that comes across? And, for instance, when the New York Times prints something and then they have to retract it, mm. or the Washington Post, mm -hmm. or the Huffington Post. I mean, it, and it, it's like, oh, well, we made a mistake. And then way down at the bottom of the column, you might, you might find some kind of, it's not even an apology, lots of times. Right. And, right. you know, I'm <clears throat> concerned about this because there are lots of times when one word, as you know, can make a difference in sure, a sentence. Sure, sure. Well, a lot of it goes um, on. I, I've said this before, so I'm, I'm repeating myself. I, my, my view is that news stories should be news stories and opinion pages should be opinion pages. Exactly. I write for an opinion page, therefore I freely acknowledge. Sometimes people will send me an angry email saying, that column of yours was so one-sided. And I'll write back to them and I'll say, yes, it was one-sided. That's, that's your an, intent. That's yeah. what an opinion column that's, is. Yeah. But it wasn't in the news pages. Yeah. And I think that... A lot, and, and this is true, I'm afraid, of both uh, conservative papers, quote, conservative papers and liberal papers. You know, in, in my view, you shouldn't be able, reading the news columns, to be able to tell if a paper is liberal or conservative. You should only be able to tell looking yes. at their editorial and op-ed right. pages. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore, and I, I think know. that's too bad. It is. But in general, I think that the, the role of the press is to be a watchdog. All right. Yeah. And it seems to me, my opinion is that under, w when Obama was president, they were way too close to lap dogs. Mm. And with Trump, they're way too close to attack dogs, yeah. you know. And so they're forsaking what it seems to me is the role that gives them credibility, you know, 
Uh, you know, all, all this stuff, you know, when Trump says that press is the enemy, I, I think that's crazy. I don't think he should be saying it. But at the same time. It's true. That, it, but, <laughs> no, I mean, everybody says, oh, you know, he's, you know, then they start talking about Hitler and Mussolini. Nobody is afraid of Trump. All right. Trump has made the media more money than they've seen in the last 25 <laughs> years. They should be sending him gifts, you know, right. because their bottom lines are fat because of him, yeah. you know, and they're when, when he calls them the enemy of the people, do you think they're running and hiding somewhere? Yeah. They're, you know, they're out there, oh, he's lied 4,000 and, you know, X number oh, yeah. of times yeah. or yeah. misleading or whatever. Yeah. Nobody's afraid of him. He's, yeah. he's not the muzzling thing, the press. The thing that bothers me, too, is the violence, especially from people that are elected congressmen, congresswomen. Yep. Uh, Maxine Waters Maxine. Is, is I have a little a typical quote example. from Maxine if, I mean, if people have. <laughs> she will... She is inciting violence, yes, she and is. she doesn't care. Right. And the press will not, of course, they won't criticize her at all. And Apparently it's, oh, not. it's just Maxine. Yeah. And the rest of us sit there and say, this woman is crazy to say what she's saying. Why isn't Congress doing something about Maxine? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have to acknowledge, I mean, some people have said, well, what about Trump saying somebody ought to punch that guy in the face or somebody ought to have that SOB, you know, this, that, and the other thing. He shouldn't be saying no, stuff like shouldn't. that. He's the president. No. Um, but Maxine, yeah, I mean, she basically, her, her quote was, if you see somebody from that ad, from the administration in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. Tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Yeah. In other words, if you don't agree with me, you don't belong in this country. Yeah. And this is a black woman, and one of the greatest stains in American history is slavery and racism. Mm. <laughs> and she wants to do the same thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah she does. It just yeah. blows yeah, me absolutely. away. Well, I know people who said to me, and at, at Brooksby, uh, I started a conservative mm -hmm. discussion group. Yeah. And people have said to me, you know, we've been here for X number of years, and we're afraid to talk. We're sure. afraid to speak. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, you shouldn't be afraid to speak. Well, when we go to dinner with our friends, mm -hmm. quote, unquote, mm -hmm. uh, they'll start talking <coughs> liberal talk, mm -hmm. and we're afraid to open our mouths. Well, and look, look what happened to Alan Dershowitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Nobody will have lunch with him no. on Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> and I said, okay, we, we have a place now where you can come and you can speak and you can listen. You can hear another side from yeah. what you've been hearing all these years. Yeah. And who knows where it's going to go, well, we, but at least we're trying. We should be political opponents. We should not be enemies. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know. And, you know, like I was telling you, when we do the show with Stuart, mm -hmm. Now, Stewart's a dyed-in-the-wool liberal. Right. We right. all know that. Mm. And we are all conservatives. Mm -hmm. And we get a little rambunctious, you might say. Nothing wrong with uh, it. No. no. Rambunctious <laughs> rhetoric, that's a good thing. <laughs> and our voices might get a little bit louder as we go on, and so do his. But at the end of the day, yeah. and the end of the show, it's like, it was a great show. We had a lot of fun. Because it's not done with animosity. No, you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. not getting personal and you're talking yes. issues. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. The exactly thing that's right. getting scary and bothers yeah. me is there's a report. Again, you don't know how accurate it is. But some lady was involved in an accident on the Cape. Mm -hmm. And the explanation that's floating around is she had the wrong bumper sticker on her car. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Yeah, uh, that's just late, mm -hmm. late this afternoon. Uh, and again, I don't know how accurate it is or whether it's just somebody exaggerating something. Right, right. Or, but, well, I've been yelled at <clears throat> for my bumper stickers. But at the but same I've... time, I, I think that we're getting to the situation where Maxine is inciting yeah, people to do something. A, a real problem. And this keeps escalating and escalating. Right. And the other one that's got me concerned is... There's a lot of talk about we're about to have a civil war and they start to escalate this f discussions to something a little more physical and a little more divisive yep. and farther and farther apart. And we, when we were having this discussion a couple of days ago with Stuart after the show was over, um, he was making the uh, observation that the crazies on the left want to give away everything. The crazies on the right are extremely violent and therefore he tends to lean left versus right but associating the majority of the conservatives or the majority of the liberals 
with the extremes on either side is painting the wrong picture. Well, the, the extreme left can be violent, too. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. They're the ones with the Black Lives Matter. And somebody tried to equate that with the Tea Party. And I said, wait a minute. I was a member of the Tea Party. I went to three Tea Party rallies. Mm -hmm. I saw absolutely no violence whatsoever. None. Well, I mean, I, I, I didn't either. I mean, it, the thing is, the extremes on both sides yeah. are, are, are violent. The, oh, the yeah. classic case is the riots they had when they were tearing down the statues of the uh, yes. Civil uh -huh. War. Right, right. And, well, know, and, and there, was a, there was a survey of, of college students uh, conducted by the Brookings Institution, which is not right-leaning. They're left-leaning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they're good. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, they're credible. They're, they're pretty accurate. They're yeah. credible. They do their homework. You know, I don't agree with their philosophy, but I, re I respect them as a, you know, as a, a voice that's, that's a credible voice. And, but they were concerned. You and I were talking about free speech a little bit uh, before uh, when we were talking about coming on the program. Mm. And uh, one of the surveys found a, a pretty disturbing percentage of college students who think it's legitimate to use violence to shut down a speaker that they disagree with mm. or that they think will be offensive or hurtful. Or and something. they've done it. Yes, yes, yes they have. They have absolutely right. done it. As a matter of fact, um, there were two college professors the other day, I'm trying to think of which, which college it was, I can't remember, that um, actually resigned. I think that might have been at Yale. I think mm. it was at a school in Connecticut, but I, I, th I, I think I, I saw think the video. It was Yale. You might it, be where they hired a former member of the Trump administration. Oh, oh, that's not, I'm sorry. No, yeah, this is a, yes. somewhere maybe in the Midwest, mm -hmm. and two members of the faculty quit. Quit, right. And fortunately, I forget the person's name, um, the rest of the faculty backed up the decision of the dean mm -hmm. and said, mm -hmm. this is not going to happen on our campus. Good. Good for them. And these were tenured professors, so they didn't really quit. Because they, oh, they didn't? Well, it said quit. And then further down, it said that they were tenured, and they're still going to be uh, at, at the school. But I, maybe they're not going to teach. I'm not going to work, I but I'll know. still get paid. Is that the way it works? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Oh, this one. Talk about being committed to your cause, right? <laughs> There's a protest going on in Boston now at uh, Northeastern mm. in front of the president's house because of the contract with ICE. Oh, oh right. yeah. And mm. what really happened is under the Obama administration, Northeastern got a contract to investigate how would you get a weapon of mass destruction across our border? And how do you protect against that? Right. Mm -hmm. And as part of ICE's responsibilities, it's not only to monitor the immigration, mm -hmm. but it's also to monitor the smuggling. Mm -hmm. And that's a serious thing. And yet, oh, we've got to protest this because it's a contract with ICE. There's no differentiation between no. an issue that they don't like dealing with the immigrants and something that is really serious. And it's just... Well, I, ICE became the flavor of the month to be outraged about, of course, because yeah. of the you know separations at the border. Right. Yeah, you know. right. And so, but it's scary because you want to They're abolish ICE. How can you can't abolish ICE? No, you can't. Who's going to protect the immigrants? Well, uh, it, who's going to protect? American citizens right, that live right. on the border. I think they're more important. Unfortunately, some people don't agree, but I think that's that's what the government has to do first: protect American citizens. Then you go to the others. You know, I don't think there should be a, a preference for protecting them, regardless, and act with everybody else. That doesn't make sense to me. Well, it does make sense to a lot of people, but um, that's it's sort of devolved into you know, if you want. Existing laws enforce you're a racist and a bigot yes. and a, you know yep. all that stuff. Yeah. Yep. So and and you're anti-immigrant. If, yes. if you're anti-illegal immigration, that makes you anti-immigrant. Anti yes, I've had these <laughs> Which, discussions at Brooksby, yeah. and you know I've said there is a difference between an immigrant here legally and an illegal alien. Well, you you notice with all the you know all the criticism. Beyond criticism, I have yet to be able to get one of my left-wing friends, or 
anybody in Congress on the left to say, okay, what do you mean specifically by humane border enforcement? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Put it into yeah. a proposal a law. Right. Is that law going to say anybody who gets to, who crosses the border can stay? Anybody with a child can stay? What do you mean? You know? Yeah. Humane border and nobody will say what what they no. actually mean about. I don't think they know. No. <laughs> I truly don't think they do. Doug Casey writes a column mostly on uh, the market and what's the good stock of the day or something mm, like right. that. But he got into a discussion a while back about the corruption of the English language. <laughs> that exactly the same point you're making there. Yeah. They throw out these phrases. All right. That really sounds good, mm -hmm. but what does it really mean? Yeah, right. And I get wound up over um, global warming when mm -hmm. they start throwing out, oh. well, it's dirty energy or it's clean energy or it's renewable energy. And these are f terms are so phony if yep. you have any technical background. Of course, of course. But you mention anything like that, oh, no, no, that ain't the thing. And They won't listen. They don't well, listen. No, no, no. They, they, they listen they, a lot. They, they focus group test phrases. Like, you, you don't, you, toward the end of Obama's presidency, you never heard him say gun control. Yeah. You heard him say common sense gun safety laws. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. That was the focus group correct. tested correct. phrase. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yes, yes. Yeah, I've read George Lakoff and. Uh, we're, uh, yeah. Believe it or not, we're almost out of time. Yeah. We have about. Two and a half minutes to go. Okay. Would you like to make a last sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Paragraph? <laughs> no, I, Whatever. I, I've, I've enjoyed the discussion. I mean, I, I think it's, it's great. I mean, we agree on most things, so maybe it wasn't quite as uh, exuberant as it might have been otherwise. <laughs> well, okay. I didn't what, get to everything. Uh, Taylor. Can you finish up? What's the fix? How do we yeah. get back to a country where well, we have a middle and... Compromise. I, I, I liked uh, Orrin Hatch, who's obviously an old white guy, like <laughs> even older than me. But Orrin Hatch uh, had an op-ed column in the Globe where he talked about the fact that we don't talk to each other. We yell at each other. Yeah. Or uh, he didn't use that phrase exactly, but he <laughs> basically was putting out a plea for civility. You know, at the same time, you know, have some rigorous arguments and debates. But you know, I. There's it's it's classic stories about uh, President Reagan and Tip O'Neill going out for a beer after yeah. they fought each other, you know, tooth yeah. and nail in in Congress and, and the presidency and yeah. stuff like that. They, they liked each other, even though they had different good faith views of what was best for the country. I mean, I, I can respect anybody who really thinks that whatever they think is best for the that's country, the not just themselves, line. but the country. Yeah. I think that's the key. I what's guess, best yeah. for the country. Yeah. And that's not what's happening. Nope. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we appreciate you coming. Pleasure. Uh, we hope you'll come back again. And I appreciate uh, this air-conditioned uh, little <laughs> chamber on a day like today. Oh, I know. It's really tough. <laughs> it's summertime. It's really tough. Yeah. yeah. 92 yeah. outside. So <clears throat> we will be back uh, soon, another day, with more exciting topics and more exciting guests like we've been having for the, <clears throat> the past Nine years. We've been on air for nine years. Congrats. That's great. Yeah, thank you. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.